Welcome to Whispers in the Wind, stories of true crime. These images that you've looked at and told us about, these are all consistent with signs of suffocation. Suffocation and some sort of trauma to the, the nose and mouth. Okay. You, you spoke of it, but um, I think I'd like to ask you some questions more specific to her job. Was part of her job broken? Yes, sir, it was. Okay. And we might have to switch to the Elmo here real quick. Do you recognize that image? Yes, sir, I do. And what is that? Uh, this is a, what's called an AP. It's an x-ray coming from the beam from front to back. This is the, the skull head on. And so can you see an injury there? Yes. She has what's called a comminuted fracture, which is a fancy word for she's got multiple pieces of the jaw broken from here to here. It's a, a piece of jaw in this area that's broken off. Would that broken jaw be consistent with blunt force trauma? Absolutely. Some force from the outside, while she was still alive, created that injury. And the reason we know it's happened while she was still alive and her heart's beating, when we see all the bruising, it goes from here, down her jaw, and then onto her neck. And if you're dead, uh, you don't bruise. In order to bruise, your heart has to be pumping blood to that part of your body. And so you'll see in later photos all the blood that is actually here and going down her neck. And so can you say that her jaw was not broken because of the impact of the discharge of the gun? Yes. Now, can discharge of gun cause fractures and, and broken teeth? Yes. But I don't, know if we have, I don't know if you have pictures of her teeth. Her teeth are pristine. Um, yep. And where you would expect to see with a semi-automatic the way it works is the top part comes back, called the slide, comes back. So if the gun were pointing like this, you would expect to see injuries to the top teeth, not to the bottom. What sort of blunt force impact would be necessary to create those injuries, to create that broken jaw? It could be you know, a, uh, one, a punch, you could see it from that way, or it could be you know, you fall into something with such force that it breaks. You've seen drug, that's like car wreck type blunt force trauma. And that's, that's a blow while she's alive. All right, now I'm going to show you a couple of uh, photographs going back to her body diagram that deal with why you think this happened before she died, okay? Yes, sir. And if we could look at 20E, please. Can you describe what we're looking at, Doctor? Uh, yes, sir. An autopsy picture. Look at the amount of blood from here goes down. Uh, and it's also swollen. The area is swollen. So why do you see blood and swollen tissue? It's because you're alive. Your tissue doesn't swell and bleed after you're dead. And then 17K counsel. Is that that um, specific issue visible here, doctor? Yes. Here you can see the blood that's dissected now. The trauma. There. All right. And then lastly, 20F, please. That discoloration is blood bruising into the tissue. Okay. Moving on to uh, another injury that Candy suffered before she died, uh, we've heard some mention of it, but did you see some indications that she had suffered a significant burn before she died? Oh yes, uh, on her right arm. She suffered a very large area called second degree burn. First degree is sunburn, second degree is when you have blisters on the skin, third degree is call it full thickness burn that she you'll see on her right arm a large area of second degree burn okay and we'll bring those up I think the first one's 18 F what do we see there doctor uh, what we're seeing is you know, second degree burns and 
these are, uh, there were blisters here, you can see some of it, but there's, something has removed those blisters. The, uh, those types of secondary burns are extremely painful. Okay, and then just to run through the rest of them, they might be kind of the same, but we've got um, 20P. All right, and, and those are what we call acute, meaning fresh burns. All right, and then uh, I think there's a couple more, Council. 18G and 20R. Those burns all down this part of the third this part of the forearm. All those are, you can see the skin here, all those are second degree burns. They had been blistered, but the, the skin has gone somewhere. Is that something that necessarily had to happen before she died? Yes. The, we don't, we look for what's called vital reaction, and we can look for it microscopically. Uh, at death, where we can actually take a section of tissue and look under the microscope and says, you know, did this, is this injury pre-mortem or post-mortem? And the reason we know it's pre-mortem is you know, the creation of that sort of redness in the blister um, says that you're alive when that injury occurred. A wound like that, would you need to go to the emergency room? Absolutely. That's, Secondary burns are one for the pain, two the risk of infection. A wound like that, what would happen if you dipped that in a bubble bath, a hot bubble bath? You're going to be in excruciating pain. And the reason is you have open nerve endings. You have burns, how painful they are, particularly when you take the, the, the roof off, that blister off. You have exposed nerve endings to the air, and then to water is just going to skyrocket. Right. So, if we go back to our diagram, Council and Doctor, what I'd like to focus on right now is evidence of other evidence. I know you talked about the jaw, but other evidence of blunt force trauma to her mm -hmm. body, starting with the front side of her body, starting at the top of her head with 20M. What are we looking at there, Doctor? Uh, this is a picture from autopsy where we make an incision across the top of the scalp and then we peel the scalp back in order to get into the skull. But this is, each one of those is a injury, a bruise, a contusion. So there's been some trauma to the top of her head while she's alive. Thank you for joining me here at Whispers in the Wind. If you enjoy this channel, Please like, share, and subscribe.